Hello, it's a cookie kind of day today. And I'm over at the parents' house and I wanted to make some cookies for Mother and Jerry. And so I'm gonna make for you a cookie that I like to make when I wanna make a bunch of cookies. It's called dish pan cookies. And you can put anything you want in it. Anything but the kitchen sink, of course, because as my stepfather says, porcelain doesn't taste so good. So, and I've actually written out a card for y'all this time, and at the end of the video, I will write, you'll see the written directions because you kind of need it for this. This isn't something you can really wing. So I'm gonna get started. And out of like my favorite recipe box, I decoupaged this oh, so many years ago. It's got all my very favorite recipes in it and anecdotes and prayers, graces that we say before graces and a picture of my mama. And a little category that I call love that I put little special things in it like recipes that I don't use very often but that like my father sent me scotch eggs. I'll make those for you sometime. He even sent me the tarragon. This was over 20 years ago. Doesn't smell like tarragon anymore, but I just keep it because it reminds me of him. He's been gone since 01. So that's in the love section of my recipe box. So anyway, let's get started on these delicious cookies. You're gonna love them. So what you want to do is in a large pan, they, they're talking a dish pan. Well, I'm at the folks house. They don't have a dish pan I can use. I do, believe it or not, out at the lake house. So I'm just gonna use their great big old bowl. So it says in a large dish pan, you want to cream the sugar, the vanilla, the oil, and the eggs. So sugar, we got two cups of light brown sugar and one cup of white sugar. And I've already got that measured out in the bowl. And you want to pack that brown sugar tightly because it, it, it um, condenses down. So, so you want to make sure you have two cups and one cup of the white sugar which is already nice and loose. Just give that a little mix. And then we're gonna add the vanilla, oil, and eggs. So it is two teaspoons of vanilla. I'm gonna use their big old bottle of, it's Mexican vanilla. They've had this bottle for years. If this was at my house, it'd be gone. I happen to know this cap holds just under two teaspoons of vanilla. I've measured it before. So let's add our two teaspoons of vanilla. And if you got a little bit more and filled it to the top, it's just gonna taste better, to be honest. So, and then next we want to add the oil. And as far as the oil goes, it was, believe it or not, it's a lot of oil, but you need this. So it is two cups of oil. Oops, I forgot my mixing, my mixing cup. One second. That was silly. So, we're gonna add two cups of oil. One. These are great if you wanna like take these to a potluck or a picnic or a um, some kind of event with lots of children because it makes a lot. And that's the goal here. Okay, so we got our oil, sugars, and we got our vanilla and we got to add our eggs. And as far as eggs go, it calls for four eggs. So I've got three already in the cup. Let me do my fourth one. And mix it up. Real good. Get it started for the mixer. So put that in there. Now, that's the first step, and that was easy. So, I'm gonna give this a little mix. And I wanna cream this so it gets really fluffy. So, I'm not at home with my KitchenAid. So, I'm going to use, I will show you what I'm going to use. This is what we always used when I was growing up. Here, I got it all mixed up pretty well. Let me set this aside. And we're going to use their handy dandy old fashioned mixer, hand mixer. 
So this is going to be a little loud, so. Is that bad? That's not too bad. I'll put you on pause. Alrighty, and so I've mixed it up and it's kind of started dissolving all the sugar and, and getting that a little bit more creamier and a little fluffier. And now it wants us to add the flour, soda, and salt. So I've got four cups of flour here and it calls for two teaspoons of baking soda. So let's put that right in the flour. One and two. Okay, set that aside. I'm gonna give that a little stir. Make sure that that baking soda is mixed into that flour really good. And you don't wanna add this all at once. There, I think that's mixed up pretty nice. Okay, so let's mix some of this in. figure out how to work this. Wouldn't you know? Let's make sure it's plugged in. Yeah, I think it is. It may have just be so old that it got hot. But guess what? Shuckins. That's okay. I can do this by hand. I'm strong. You know, like Julia Child said. I told you yesterday. She said, just act like you meant to do it. So, we'll mix that up. I'm glad it worked while I was creaming those ingredients because it really would have been hard for me to do that. It would have taken a while. If you had your KitchenAid mixer, you could do this much easier. But, you know, I love my kitchen utensils to all be old-fashioned. All, all be old fashioned. And so why not mix it by old-fashioned means? It's funny, when I say the word utensils, I always think of my precious brother Kevin, who we all love so much. He's no longer with us, but he was so funny. And one day he asked for, he wanted a fork, and he goes, do you have any, and he couldn't think of the word, he goes, do you have any eye pencils? And I just thought that was so cute, because if you think about it, they really are eye pencils. You're the one using it, not utensils. So we're getting that mixed in there pretty good. I'll put you in the pause while I mix this in and be right back with you. Boy, has my arm gotten a workout. We just don't realize how easy we have it nowadays. And as usual, I forgot my teaspoon of salt. I would have mixed that right in with the flour. So let's just mix that in now. Got to have salt. So let me do some more of my daily exercise. You would think my arms would look really good. Not satisfied with that. Whew, that is not easy. There, but I think that looks good. Look at that. It really is about as thick as peanut butter. Look how much of it there is. Okay, next. Now the fun starts. We're going to be mixing all this stuff in. So we've got the all the ingredients, and now we're going to fold in. And like I said, you can put anything you want in this. So. It calls for um, a cup and a half of quick oats. So I want this oat to be very fine for my mother so it's easier for her. You can still get the good flavor, but I took her old Osterizer blender and I blended it up really, really fine. And so it's gonna give it a great flavor, but it's not gonna be real chewy. So let's put that there. Get that folded in. Not going to be easy. I'll say. Don't you like the face I make when I mess up my film? It's like, oh no. I don't know how to cut and slice. <clears throat> so I've got that oat mixture. Quick oats. But I only had old-fashioned oats, so <clears throat> I used them. They're going to be fine. I ground them up really finely, so no problem. And so next we're going to put in it calls for four cups of crushed cornflakes. Well, I like cornflakes, but I like Rice Krispies too. So I put half and half. So two cups of cornflakes and two cups of Rice Krispies. And I'm gonna put it right here. 
in a Ziploc baggie so I can crush them up. That's the fun part. Take the aggression out. So I've got my corn flakes, my Rice Krispies. I'm just going to crush them up a little bit. Will be easy to chew. Yummy. I'm going to mix them. I tried not to crush the Rice Krispies as much. They were on the bottom anyway. So I'm going to put those in and get to mixing. So let me get these mixed in and show you that. Okay, that was intense, an intense workout. Oh, Kitchen Aid, where are you now? And so next, I mean, you can add anything you want. So I wanted to add some nuts. So I've got, I bought a trail mix package because it had everything that I wanted. It has cashews, dried cranberries, dried pineapples with almonds and macadamias. And I took the nuts all out of it. I separated them. And I also ground these in Mom and Jerry's Bulldosterizer because nuts are really hard to chew. So it's a cup and a half ground down, very, very fine. And I learned that I used to have the pleasure, the immense pleasure when I was in Montana of cooking at the senior center there in Roundup, Montana. And when I took over for Debbie, Debbie Adolph, who was then the, their cook, uh, she told me that the elders there didn't like the onions very much and some of the vegetables and she said just sneak it in by grinding it down so such a good lesson Debbie and I never had anyone complain so that worked out really well and so you learn things tips get passed down from one person to the next from generation to generation and so that's how I learned that little trick you can do that with your children too if they don't like carrots or some vegetable just puree the heck out of it Okay, and see, I also did that with the cranberries and the pineapple. I, I didn't, they were really big chunks, so I made them much smaller. I didn't want to make it very pureed or anything. So we're going to put all of that in there. These are going to be delicious cookies. You could add chocolate chips, white chocolate chips, whatever kind of chip you want. I'm leaving out the chocolate. I'm not a huge Believe it or not, chocolate chip cookie fan. I don't like chocolate all that much, unless it's a chocolate ice cream or a chocolate cake. Very rare that I'll eat a piece of chocolate candy bar, unless it's a really good quality. So there's that. So guess what? When I get this mixed in, they are finished. Answer I'm ready for the pan. So hold on, I'll be right back with you. All right, and so they're all mixed up in this batter, super thick, but it's going to be good. One little trick I learned, so we're going to scoop this out, this batter up, fourth of a cup cookies. So I just spray with a little oil my measuring cup. In case I need to get my hands in there, I like to have a little oil on them so the dough doesn't stick. So I want to scoop about a fourth of a cup. I knew I was going to get my hands in. See, there we go. And so, it says to put them on an ungreased baking sheet. Yeah, I've learned that lesson hard before. I always slightly grease my baking pan, not a lot of oil. These, these are gonna come out to be nice big cookies. I've got a big cookie sheet here. Hello, little puppy. Did you have fun outside? And so, I am making these nice little big old cookies. I'm going to put three on each row and then I'll show you what that looks like when I've got them all on the pan. My word, these cookies are so big, so I'm going to slice, slightly press them down. I've got a great big old cookie sheet here and I've got three, six, nine cookies on here. Just get them started spreading. And we're going to cook them in a 375 oven for 12 to 14 minutes. I find 12 minutes, they're softer. 14-ish minutes, they're gonna be a little crispier. So I will show you these yummy cookies when they're done. And I'm gonna take a bite of the batter. Mmm. 
Yes. If the batter is this good, just imagine how great the cookies are going to be. I'll let you see them when they're done. Alrighty. Cookies are done and out of the oven. These right here are those half cup scoops. Look how big they are. They're giant. I wanted to make some smaller ones for the folks. So I had to reduce the cooking time to nine minutes on these. And they're just perfection. Yummy. Gonna be so good. And look at all the cookies this is made. Like, oh my gosh. About three dozen at least. And I'm gonna freeze some of the batter and put pop this in their freezer. And then next time I come over, or if they want to, they can make some. So let me go ahead and taste one. Now these giant ones, I cooked a little longer, so they'll be crispier. Let's see. <laughs> mm. I'm all about these dish pan cookies. So, so good. And I know I want to get out, try a little smaller one because I want to see if they're softer. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've never made them both hard and soft. And I'm going to tell you, I think I like the soft ones best. So you don't have to make the big giant cookies if you don't want, which were a fourth a scoop, which just cook them about, I'd say, 11 minutes at 375. And the smaller ones, I cooked for nine minutes at 375. And I know the kids love those great big cookies. So if you're making them for kids, just go ahead and make them big. Add whatever you want. And I can't wait to see you guys again. You just have a fantastic day, and I'll be talking with you very, very soon.